athletes and student athletes, Pascal Siakam and Ian Baker. Coach, will you start with an opening statement? Certainly. First of all, I'd like to thank whoever set up the microphones. They're very loud, and that's good. Last year, they were a little soft, so I saw Rob Barnes pulling the mic to him. I'll just go to the mic. You see that last night? He was messing up, grabbing everything. Anyway, uh, great effort by the guys. I thought we came out and played with the energy necessary to, to uh, you know, throw the first punch, so to speak. And having that extra day of rest was obviously very good for us. But it was our execution, I think, on defense and, and our aggressiveness, uh, you know, on missed shots and getting out in what we call speed game and trying to get some easy buckets. We got some buckets off of turnovers and a couple of offensive rebounds. So, you know, we scored a lot of different ways, got to the free throw line, shot it well from the perimeter. So all of that makes for a good recipe. So I, I, I want to commend the rest of the team for playing so well in the first half so I could sit Pascal for so long. <laughs> but outside of that, I thought it was a great team win. Questions? Uh, Ian, uh, winning that 22 to five run in the first half, most of without Pascal, and I don't think you guys probably would have done that earlier in the year. Can you just kind of talk about the maturity of this team and how much this team has grown up throughout the year to be able to do that here in March? Yeah, it just, it just shows how far we came from the beginning of the season. Like you said, in the beginning of the season, we probably wouldn't have been able to pull that off without Pascal in the game. But uh, like Coach touched on in the locker room, he was just saying, uh, that's just how, that just shows how deep we are as a team. You know, Pascal not going to be able to, you know, have 30 to 10 every game. So, you know, it might be times where he not, he getting in foul trouble, he not in the game. Or, or me, I'm not in the game. So, you know, that's a good thing about being deep as a team. Other guys can pick up the slack. Good answer. Thank you. so close in the first half, Braxton beat the shot clock buzzer twice, I think, with threes. How important has his sort of surge been to, to how well you guys are playing? Well, he's been playing very well as of late. Um, and obviously, you know, what we just touched on earlier, depth is going to be a key for us, especially when you get to one and done time. You can't afford to have one or two guys off and, and still operate at a high, high level of performance. So uh, we've had a lot of those. We, we've been very fortunate um, in the sense that when we don't go to a sh what we call a shot clock play and we stay in our conceptual basketball, whatever that, that, that base offense is at that time, uh, we tell the guys just, just, just keep playing. The guys just got to be aware of the clock, obviously. But, and he sized the guy up pretty well. He knew how much time was on the clock where he took a shot on the first one. And Ian did that, I think it was uh, our last game, a couple times um, where you know shot clock was winding down and Ian just kind of knew what he had to do and set his feet and, and got him underneath those hips and, and drove up a nice, nice three-pointer. So we've been fortunate, you know, with, the, with those, uh, with those end of shot clock, uh, you know, kind of planning that we have. It's not just, it, it was late in the shot clock. They knew that, you know, they knew when the, the clock was expired. Unfortunately, I told, uh, not unfortunately, but I told, who was it, Rashawn, when he drove and he passed it to, um, to Jalen and Jalen made that, that three, and I told Jay, I told Rashawn that was your fault that he that he, that he you know uh, had the shot clock expire because he um, Rashawn should have been the one that shot it you know so he's got another clock so sometimes you get sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't. Uh, Pascal, two straight uh, solid offensive games for you guys as a team after it kind of a, was a little bit shaky there at the end of February, but have you kind of seen anything different uh, with the offense working? And obviously, nice to see it this time of year working so well. Uh, I mean, we're still doing the same thing, you know, we've been doing from the beginning of the year, and, and we just got to keep, you know, stay confident, you know. We have a lot of shots that didn't drop, you know, during a good period of time. Now they drop, and so you just got to keep, you know, getting to the gym and, and getting shots up and be, being confident that it's going to go in. Uh, Pascal, too, congratulations on winning Black Player of the Year as well, and first team as well. I guess um, for both of you, what does it kind of mean for you guys to be uh, to be selected for those honors? Um, I mean, it's a blessing, man. And from you know, just seeing from where you know we come from and stuff, you know, it's it's been a long season. You know, having those that we, the type of guys that we have, you know, great teammates. You know, it's just we love each other. You know, and I think it feels good. You know, it just feels good. Like Ian had it, uh, was first team. You know, he's been working his eyes, um, his butt, his butt off. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he's been working really hard, so I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see that you know he can get those arms. Yeah, man. Uh, like he said, it's a blessing. Um, it just shows all the hard work we put in the summertime paying off, and uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without my teammates. So, thanks to them.
Uh, Ian, um, you know, did a really good job guarding Martez Harrison. You held him without a field. You and Rashawn both held him without a field goal until about midway through the second half. What was kind of the game plan on him, or do you feel like was kind of successful in slowing him down? It was just to try to keep him in front. You know, he's a he's a great driver. He haven't been shooting the ball, you know, too well this season. So uh, that was just our goal going into the game, just trying to keep him in front and you know make him finish over us, or you know if he get past us, make him finish over the bigs. But uh, that's all we were trying to do, just keep him in front. Any of you guys have any preference or expectation for who you play tomorrow going for five straight? Uh, it doesn't matter. Good answer. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I was going to love training. <laughs> no, it's, that's a trick question. <laughs> uh, Marvin, yeah, can you kind of talk about just how, how big Ian and, Rash and Rashawn at times his de their defense was on uh, really slowing down Martez Harris and kind of what was you know, the game plan for that too? Well, collectively, we thought, you know, obviously we had to put different guys on him and rotate. Braxton guarded him a little bit. Ian guarded him some. Uh, Rashawn guarded him some. He's just too good of a player to, to, to zap one guy's energy. You know, Ian could have quite easily guarded him the whole game, but then would, he, would Ian have been as efficient offensively if he had that task? So, so we tried to put some different guys on him and mix it up a little bit. And, and Ian was pretty good from the field, and he ended up with, what you end up with? 20, 20 points. He said a dub. I like that. <laughs> I like that. And he ended up with dub. He had six rebounds from the point guard position. So obviously he was very good offensively and got to the free throw line and did some good things for us. I don't know if he would have been able to do that, extending that energy all game on Martez by himself. So like he alluded to, it was a good team victory. Any other questions? Mark, you have one more? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay, so, um, any, anyone you guys have coached to uh, going for something that uh, hasn't been done at this school since I think the early 90s uh, with five straight WAC tournament, or I'm sorry, five straight NCAA tournament bids and five straight tournament championships. Um, I guess just talk about that excitement of trying to do that tomorrow. Um, it's very exciting knowing what's, you know, what's ahead of us, but uh, at the same time, we just got to keep doing what we've been doing all year, and uh, I think we'll be good. Um, I mean, like like Ian said, you know, we just gotta okay. keep we just gotta keep doing what we do, you know. Um, just take it, you know, one position at a time, and and just you know keep doing what we do. This is called the minor bird syndrome. When you teach kids certain things, <laughs> they get a chance to repeat it. It's awesome, but they that means they're listening. Hello, uh, Trayvon on the TV. What's he doing? <laughs> hey, oh, that was the reading. Uh, reading that did. Community service project that the WAC did. Anyway, we got distracted. Where were we? No, we were talking about uh, you know the possibility of getting to five. And uh, Mark, I'll, I'll just summarize that with great kids, great staff. You have opportunities to do stuff like that, and and so we're extremely fortunate to have uh, you know the things that we have in place from leadership all the way down. We have really good alignment from our president to athletic director to support from you know all all, all around us. And and when you have that kind of synergy and belief, you know, and, and support, then it, it makes things a little bit easier to, to, to move forward. And so hopefully we can complete the task tomorrow. Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Be amazed, baby. Be amazed, baby.